Famous investor Warren Buffett once said, do not save what's left after spending. Instead, spend what's left after saving. And what better way to let your money work for you than by building a monster dividend portfolio? Dividend has been the talk of the town for the most part of the financial model, and now there are monster portfolios that are both safe and high yield. In this video, we'll show you and John the art of building a monster dividend portfolio, what to look for in an investment company, the portfolio structure, and mistakes to avoid. We'll show you step-by-step -step how to create a powerful investment plan that keeps your money safe and makes it grow significantly. A portfolio that not only provides steady income, but also has the potential to grow your wealth exponentially. Whether you're a seasoned investor or just starting out, get ready to learn the strategies and tips and tricks that can turn your ordinary portfolio into an unstoppable force in the world of dividends. We'll show you how much you can earn from a one-time investment of just $10,000, and in the end, we'll see if our portfolio can earn $20,000 a month. Starting from the very basis of Understanding Dividends and How They Work in simple terms, dividends are a portion of a company's profits that are distributed to its shareholders. When you invest in a company's stock and become a shareholder, you become entitled to a share of the company's earnings. Dividends are like special treats given by companies to their shareholders. When a company makes a profit, it has the choice to share some of that money with the people who own its stock. So, if you're a shareholder in a company, you might receive some of its earnings as dividends. The dividend amount is usually shown as a percentage of the stock's price, known as dividend yield, which helps investors understand how much they'll get in return. Some companies pay dividends regularly, like every few months or once a year, while others might give special dividends when they have extra profits. To understand how dividend works, here's a simple example. Imagine you have 100 shares of a company that pays 50 cents per share every three months. You'll get $50 every three months as a reward. If you use that money to buy more shares, your investment can grow over time. More on growing dividends later on. But the question is, why dividends? Investors often include dividend-paying stocks in their portfolios for a couple of reasons. First, these stocks give them regular income, like a monthly or yearly paycheck. Second, they feel safer because even though stock prices can go up and down, companies that pay dividends are usually stable and profitable. And the main reason? While not perfect, the dividend approach gives us a greater opportunity to beat inflation over time than a bond-only portfolio. If you have both, that's the best. The investor who expects a safe 5% return without any risk is asking for the impossible. It's similar to looking for an insurance policy that protects you no matter what happens. It just doesn't exist. Even hiding cash in the mattress won't work due to low but constant inflation. Investors have to take risks, whether they like it or not, because the risk of inflation is already here. Growth is the only way to beat it. Now that you understand the what, how, and why of dividends, it's time to move on to the first step of creating your monster portfolio. Selecting Dividend Stocks There's a simple motto here, safety first. Remember how your mom told you to look both ways before crossing the street? The same principle applies here. The easiest time to avoid risk in investing is before you start. Before you even start buying into investments, set your criteria. Next, do your homework on potential companies and wait until the price is right. If in doubt, wait some more. More trouble has been avoided in this world by saying no rather than by diving right in. Wait until you find nice blue chips with bulletproof balance sheets yielding 4 to 5% or even more. Not all risks can be avoided, but you can certainly avoid unnecessary ones if you choose your investments with care. One company that checks all these boxes is the International Business Machines Corporation, nicknamed Big Blue. There's one thing that IBM has been consistent with, paying dividends to its shareholders. In fact, for the past 28 years in a row, they have increased their dividend payout. This means that they've been giving more money to their shareholders each year for a long time. 
Even though IBM has had some rough times, it still manages to be reliable when it comes to giving dividends. And in 2023, they raised the dividend again, showing that they have enough money to keep this streak going. This is something that makes them stand out as one of the best dividend stocks. When you look at how much the company's dividends have grown over the years, you'll see that it has been consistently increasing them since 1989. If you're thinking about investing in this company, focus on its potential for future dividend growth. In the case of IBM, it has a promising 10-year dividend growth of 7.05%. Another company that fits perfectly in this portfolio is Microsoft, the technology giant. Known by the ticker symbol MSFT, the company has increased its dividend for 11 consecutive years. MSFT is also a dividend achiever, having increased its dividend by at least 10% per year for at least 10 consecutive years. While the current dividend yield of 0.79% may not seem very impressive for the tech giant huh? at first sight, taking a step back and looking at the big picture shows a different story. The company offers an impressive 10-year dividend growth rate of 11.57%. This means that despite the current lower yield, the company has been consistently increasing its dividends over the past decade, making it an attractive choice for long-term investors seeking steady growth in their income. So don't be fooled by the present numbers. The company's history of dividend growth shows its potential for rewarding investors in the future. Another superb example is Broadcom, a strong company that makes computer chips and software. They have a good track record of increasing dividends since 2010 and a competitive edge. Currently, they're offering a dividend yield of only 2.05%, but when you look at the growth perspective of the company, you can see it has a 10-year dividend growth forecast of 37.71%. The company was only paying $0.07 in 2010, and now it pays up to $16.90 per share. Based on this growth, there's no doubt that this company can achieve its dividend growth rate of 37.71% 10 years from now. Same is the case with American Express, which has a current dividend yield of 1.41%. But for dividend portfolio seekers, it promises a 10-year dividend growth of 10.44%. And this number is very much believable, as the company has been consistently increasing since 1989. That is 34 consecutive years of dividend increases. Likewise, Apple's current dividend yield is only 0.5%, which seems very low for the tech giant, but it has a promising 10-year dividend growth of 9%. Some other companies investors might find attractive in their monster portfolios are Church & Dwight, with a current dividend yield of 1.11% and a 10-year dividend growth rate of 7.48%. Expeditors International of Washington, with a current dividend yield of 1.1% and a 10-year dividend growth rate of 8.9%. Ecolab, with a current dividend yield of 1.12% and a 10-year dividend growth rate of 8.96%. Brown & Brown, with a current dividend yield of 0.65% and a 10-year dividend growth rate of 9.69%. And last but not least, Next Era Energy, with a current dividend yield of 2.46% and a 10-year dividend growth rate of 10.98% increasing their dividends for 25 years. Companies with long histories of annual dividend growth also offer some peace of mind. When a firm manages to raise its dividend year after year through recession, war, market crashes, and more, it's making a powerful statement about both its financial resilience and its commitment to shareholders. We choose these stocks for our monster portfolio, but if you want to add your favorite stock, you can find your ideal companies in the Dividend Aristocrats list of the S&P 500 index. These companies have raised their payouts annually for at least 25 consecutive years. They all play key roles in the American economy, and although they're scattered across pretty much every sector of the market, they do all share one thing in common, a commitment to reliable and long-term dividend growth. But before you go on and select stock to add to your portfolio, make sure to avoid very common mistakes that most investors ignore. Find companies with modest payout ratios. This is how much a company shares its profit with investors as dividends. A payout ratio of 60% or less is best to allow for wiggle room in case of unforeseen company trouble. Anything above 70% is a no-go. 
Find companies with a long history of raising their dividends. Bank of America's quarterly dividend yield was just 0.1% in 2011 when it paid out one cent per share. Ten years later, the dividend yield has increased to 2.2% with a 21 cent quarterly dividend in 2021. That's how it's supposed to work. Although it might seem small at first, it can have a huge impact on the investment. In the end, we'll show you how this compounding growth can help us reach the target of $20,000 per month even with a low current dividend yield. Another common thing to look for, find companies that have a starting low yield. And that brings us to the mistake most investors make. Many dividend investors put too much focus on the starting yield of a company's dividends. They get attracted to companies that offer high starting yields, but these may not always be the best investments. Some companies with high starting yields may not perform well in the long run. It's a value trap. The high yield trap looks good at first. Usually, you see companies with high current yields but little in the way of fundamental health. Although these companies can tempt investors, they don't provide the stability of income that you should be seeking. A 10% current yield might look good now, but it could leave you in grave danger of a dividend cut. One good example of such a company is Verizon Communications, a telecom company that gives a lot of money to its shareholders as dividends. The company's dividend yield is currently 7.7%, but there's a problem. Verizon owes a lot of money. In fact, they owe more than 200% of what they actually own. On top of that, Verizon's profits have been going down in recent years. The money they make for each share of stock has fallen by more than 10% in the last five years. This happened because other telecom companies are competing with them, and not as many people use traditional landline phones anymore. With all these challenges, there's a possibility that Verizon might have to reduce or huh? stop paying dividends in the future. This would not be good for investors who bought their stock hoping to get regular dividend payments. Likewise, there's Barnes & Noble, a book-selling company which lures investors into a mouth-watering 9.24% dividend yield. In reality, the business has faced financial struggles due to competition from Amazon. They started paying dividends, but it's more than they earn, and they've had declining sales for five years. The share price is volatile, and there's a lawsuit from a former CEO. Investors are urging the company to find a buyer like Amazon or private equity firms. So it's better to focus on companies that can grow their dividends consistently over time rather than just looking at the high starting yield. Such companies tend to offer better returns and are more beneficial for investors in the long run. Now that you have a good selection of companies to add to your portfolio, we move on to the next step, which is what to do with dividends. Remember, it's a long-term investment, most likely for your retirement. So, if you opt for dividend growth stocks, your next step should be to reinvest your dividends and allow the dividend snowball effect enough time to work its magic. You can end up with a much greater yield on investment than if you were to invest in high-yielding assets that don't offer much, if any, dividend growth. Want to see how much difference it can make? Let's say John invests $10,000 in a stock that pays a dividend yield of 10%. If John chooses not to reinvest his dividends, in one year, it'll earn him a dividend of $1,000. And when John retires, which is 30 years from now, he will still have only $10,000, which pays $1,000 a year. Now, if John does reinvest his dividend, the same $10,000 investment, after 30 years, will be worth $193,581, paying him an annual dividend of $18,206, or $1,517 per month. The difference in the value of the investment is very noticeable. In fact, reinvestment has added an extra $183,581 to his investment. Probably the perfect real-life example of this is Warren Buffett's Coca-Cola position. Because Warren understood how dividend growth can be an investor's secret weapon and had the patience to see it through, he now has a near 57% yield on cost with his Coca-Cola position, which means he's earning 57% of his original investment through dividends each year. Not only is that unbelievable in its own right, but it's a much higher cash flow return than you'll likely ever experience from the JP Morgan Equity ETF, Main Street Capital Corporation, or the like. 
Overall, while high-yielding dividend stocks offer immediate income gratification, it is the dividend growth stocks that are the secret weapon for long-term wealth accumulation. Now the question is, where to reinvest the dividends? One option is to reinvest the dividends back into the same companies that paid them. This is known as a dividend reinvestment plan, or in short, DRIP. By reinvesting dividends, you can purchase more shares of the company, which can compound your investment over time. Or you can choose another approach. Use the dividends to buy shares of other companies in different sectors or industries that, over time, have shown promising forward yield. This helps you diversify your portfolio and reduce risk. In fact, it's one of the most important aspects of building a monster dividend portfolio and is our next step into making a monster portfolio. Diversification Diversify your holdings of good stocks. It's a strategy used by financial planners, fund managers, and investors to better manage their investments. It means putting different types of investments together in one portfolio. The goal is to get better overall returns and reduce risks by spreading out investments across various options. So instead of putting all your money in one place, you mix and match different investments to make your money grow more safely. Diversify your weighting to include 5 to 7 industries. Having 10 oil companies looks nice unless oil falls to $10 a barrel. Huh? Dividend stability and growth is the main priority, so you'll want to avoid a dividend cut. If your dividends do get cut, make sure it's not an industry-wide problem that hits all your holdings at once. Take, for instance, the chip shortage that recently affected the production of all EV manufacturers, including Tesla. But beware of a fine-line rule of not over-diversifying. Diversification means spreading your investments across different companies to reduce risk. However, once you have around 7 to 10 different companies in your portfolio, Adding more companies doesn't reduce risk much further, it just makes the portfolio complex and hard to manage. Let me explain why. There are two types of risks in the stock market, specific risk and systematic risk. Specific risk is about problems with individual companies, like their management or competition. Systematic risk is about broader things, like economic crises or wars. We can't avoid systematic risk, but we can reduce specific risks by spreading our investments across different companies. Research shows that having around 7 to 10 different companies in our portfolio already reduces specific risks a lot. Adding more companies like 20, 30, or 40 doesn't reduce risk much more. It just makes our portfolio more complicated and difficult to handle. In your portfolio, you can have 10 main positions, like the ones we discussed in the Monster Portfolio, while selecting your stocks for your portfolio. These include IBM, Microsoft, Broadcom, American Express, Apple, Church & Dwight, Expeditors International, Ecolab, Brown & Brown, and NextEra Energy. This way, we have a good balance of risk reduction and manageability. But also, while diversifying, make sure you don't invest or reinvest into bad industries or companies. These industries can be complicated and uncertain, leading to risky investments. Firstly, cyclical industries like airlines, American Airlines, Delta Airlines, and automobiles like General Motors, Ford Motor Company, are highly sensitive to economic conditions. When the economy is doing well, their dividends may grow, but during economic downturns, their dividends can be cut or eliminated, leading to an unpredictable dividend income. Secondly, companies with high levels of debt in debt-heavy industries like utilities and banks, like Wells Fargo & Company or Bank of America Corporation, face challenges in maintaining or increasing dividend payments since they must allocate a significant portion of their profits to interest payments. This debt burden could result in dividend cuts if companies struggle to manage their financial obligations. Thirdly, competition-heavy industries like consumer staples, like Procter & Gamble Company or Colgate Palm Olive Company, and food and beverage demand substantial spending on marketing and advertising, reducing profits huh? and making it difficult for companies to sustain or grow dividends, making them unreliable for dividend income. Lastly, companies in slow growth industries like utilities and in some real estate investment trusts may face limited earnings growth, limiting their ability to support rising dividend payouts. As a result, dividends in slow growth industries might remain stagnant or decrease over time. 
To make informed investment decisions, thorough research and analysis of these industries and the specific companies within them are crucial to avoid potential dividend traps. Always opt for more stable and consistent dividend-paying stocks. It's better to focus on companies with simple and stable businesses because they can lead to better returns in the long term. Now that you know the what, why, and how of making the Monster Dividend Portfolio, the next very important question is, how much do you need to invest to live completely cost-free and never worry about not being able to make dues? No worries. For this, we'll show you what you can earn from one-time investments of $10,000, $50,000, and $100,000. We'll use all the stocks we picked up using all the steps combined. You can invest different amounts in different stocks, but for the sake of making these examples easy, we will make investments in all stocks equally and we'll be sure not to over-diversify our portfolio to avoid unnecessary complications. So let's say you have a 30-year plan and you decide to reinvest the dividends back into the same stocks that paid those dividends. We know that IBM pays a 10-year dividend growth of 7.05%, Microsoft has 11.57%, Broadcom with 37.71%, American Express with a very respectable 10.44%, Apple the tech giant with 9%, Church & Dwight has 7.48%, Expeditors International with a respectable 8.9%, Ecolab with 8.96%, Brown & Brown with 9.69% and lastly NextEra Energy with a 10-year growth rate of 10.98%. Now, if you add all those growth rates together, then divide by 10, that's the number of stocks we're holding, you will get your average portfolio return, which in our case would be 12.19%. Based on this rate, if John invests $10,000 today and reinvests his dividends, his initial investment 30 years from now will be valued at $366,855, paying him an annual dividend yield of $41,510 or about $3,460 per month. And that is more than enough for someone to retire and never worry about meeting deadlines. John can have a very happy, stress-free life after retirement. But what if you have an initial investment budget of $50,000 or $100,000? Okay, moving on to the big leagues, starting with $50,000. If John invests $50,000 today and reinvests his dividends, in 30 years, his investment will balloon to a jaw-dropping $1,834,278, paying him an annual dividend of $207,548, or roughly $17,295 per month. This may look like an exaggeration, but these numbers are completely achievable. This is what a monster portfolio can do. And the best part, all of these companies are some of the safest in the entire world. So, pick the right stock, reinvest, and give your investment time to grow. Now, let's move on to a $100,000 budget. If John invests $100,000 in this monster portfolio, in 30 years, his $100,000 will be valued at an astounding $3,668,556, paying him an annual dividend of $415,097, or roughly $34,591 per month. This monthly payment is more than enough to allow John to live a completely worry-free life. He can buy his dream car or house or travel the world and still have money left to spend on luxuries. About a $10,000, $50,000, or $100,000 initial investment. But what about a $1,000 investment or a $200 monthly investment? Can these smaller amounts still make you $5,000 a month? Watch our video on the Dividend Snowball, where we show you how you can make this a reality.